Hello there everyone, Canute to it's Steve with you reporting again um, on his more latest finds. A lot of singles, some albums, uh, taking from purchases, record store, charity shop finds, and more. Um, I hope everyone's been well this week. Um, you know, you had a good had a good week. Um, exciting football on the television. Um, Barcelona and Paris Saint Germain was a was a great game. We also managed to listen to some great music as well. Now I'll start off with the singles. You know, the singles. It is known that I like a bit of cheaty pop. So some of it is cheesy, some of it's a bit bit relevant. But starting off, I uh, picked up uh, Adam and the Ants' Prince Charming. It's number one single from 1981. It was the title track from the Al Prince Charming album, which was released in the same year. Belsar's Sign of the Times. Um, this was their big top 10 smash single um, from 1983. Belsar's um, were at one point used to be part of the band The Body Snatchers, which were on Two Tone. Um, there are other hip singles, Ico Ico, uh, version of that, which they got uh, the top 20 in, in 82. Bigger hit in the US than it was in the UK. This is Gary US Bonds, This Little Girl. This is um, produced by Miami Lee, Steve Van Sant, and Bruce Springsteen. Um, well, this was one of the top 20 in the States, I believe. Laura Branigan, Self, um, self Control. Uh, uh, top 20 in the UK. This Curiosity is a band by known as called the Brothers and the song called Sing Me, which I think was top twenty for them. The Brothers um, in the seventies we used to have a um, two talent shows on the television. One was Hot Opportunity Knox and the other was New Faces. Now there was a slight difference. New Faces were about featured acts that were doing the club circuits, and but the only rule was they had not made it television appearances. Opportunity Knox was more for amateurs. And the brothers, who were all from Mauritius, I believe, appeared on that and won. There was two ways of winning. Um, you had the audience um, results, and it was measured by response, and it was measured by a thing called the clapometer. The louder you clap, this thing, this star used to uh, slide across the screen to register how well you did. And then they had the public vote, which they sent in their postcards, and whoever won was invited back to open the show in the following week. I believe the brothers did so and got a deal from that, and that was their big hit single. Sarone Supernature, now this was, was a hit partly because it was featured as backing music to the uh, television programme in the 70s called the Kenny Everett Video Show. Funny programme. Some of it's on YouTube. It's worth checking out. Kenny Everett was a DJ. Um, not only a DJ, and he was madcap. He was zany, everything. He was a jit up genius in creating um, radio, in creating radio programmes. And he was invited to try it on the television. And he did the Kenny Everett Video Show, which was broadcast on Thames Television. And it was on the ITV network. He later went on did his own Kenny Everett television show, which was broadcast on the BBC. Classics Nouveau is it a dream. 1982 top 10 hit. This was their only their biggest hit. Um, part of the New Romantics, um, uh, what New Romantic um, bands of the early 80s. Coast to Coast, do the Hucklebuck, uh, top 10 hit in 1981. Coast to Coast, <coughs> excuse me, another ex example of another of a band whose lead singer who sang on the record left before it got released and became a hit, so they get somebody else doing the mime. Um, yes, I can't remember the names, I didn't research it that well, but I do remember that. Oh, early morning cup of tea. Julie Covington, her version of Alice Cooper's Only Women Bleed, top, ten, top 20 single in 1978. Deep Purple's Black Knight, number two in 1970, B-side Speaking. 
and the sublime to the ridiculous. Joe Dolce, shut up of your face. The Joe Dolce Music Theatre. It was big in Australia and it sort of came over here. It's probably hated because it kept Ultravox's Vienna off number one. It was number one in 1981. Debbie single by the Eurythmics. Oops. Never going to cry again. Um, Eurythmics when it first came out, very much more indie based than it was um, electronic. Um, yeah, I think this didn't even get in the top 40. But interesting, nonetheless. They did have, a, once they start having the hits, they did have a top 10 with this, Who's That Girl, 1983. Pleased to find some really old records, and one example, number one in 1966, Chris Farlow's Out of Time. Bit of an unusual record, I think it came out 1979 or 1980, excuse me. Carol Fialka, Eyes Have Hit. He, this wasn't a big hit, but he did have a hit in 1987 with a song called Hey Matthew. Samantha Fox, Touch Me, I Want Your Body. Um, for those who don't know, Samantha Fox was a glamour model. Um, page 3, you know, she's top, you know, appearing topless in, in a popular newspaper. Um, and she was very popular at the time. I think it's very hard to underestimate how popular she was. How, you know, we can say how big, and well, she was big, um, so to speak. Um, very popular. Um, top 10. This is a flexi disc. This is a smashes flexi disc. This is John Fox with my face. Um, these are actually apparently worth a few. Smash Hits, oh, get this here properly, was a music magazine that fe really featured on pop, pop record on the pop, on the charts. Um, it was glossy, it was in colour. It came out every two weeks, and they used to stick a flexi disc on on top as well, using the exclusive recording. Um, probably are worth a few bit quid now. You get hold of them. Um, but you could only replay it once, you know, because you know, it was just flimsy plastic. Murray Head, One Night in Bangkok. This was the first song that introduced us to the musical chess. Um, as, it, as it says, this is a song, it's a musical about a chess game in Bangkok. <laughs> Rather that uh, scribbled on, but this is Terry Jack's Season in the Sun. This was the number one record in 1974. Now, this is a Jack Braille song. And if you don't, the song, basically, Terry Jack's version is Goodbye to You, My Trusted Friend, Papa, and then first about Papa, and then first to Michelle's little one. In the Jack Braille original, well, it was, they got hurt, the, the guys that, and there's a guy called, uh, I think it's McEwen, and I think it might be Rob McEwen, I'm not sure. He heard it and was going to give it to Terry Jacks, I believe, but he didn't like the song. He didn't like the context of the song and added the papa verse, and he took out one verse. In the Jack Braille original, we've got my trusted friend and Michelle, who happens to be his partner, looks like wife. And in the third verse, the guy who's dying knows that they've been having an affair behind his back and in basically in that final verse he damns them, he basically curses them and damns them before he dies and so they changed it and it became a more syrupy song it's Terry Jackson's only hit if you thought that was depressing you should hear the B-side put a bone in it it's basically a song owed about his dog that's been knocked, knocked down a few months back I had King debut album this is King's um, Big hit single, Love and Pride, number two, 1985. A golden oldie on the RCA level. This is Nielsen's Without You, written, of course, by Pete Ham and Tom Evans, Badfinger. We all know what happened to them, unfortunately, because of you know, what happened to, with the song. Robert Palmer, Looking for Clues. It was... It was at that point the nearest he got to a hit single. 
um, just previously with Johnny and Mary, I think the whole world and dog loved, but never brought. Um, it was a shame. He did get more hits as he went along, um, but you know, the Clues album is a really good album. You should, you should dig it out. Pig Bag, proper pop has got a brand new Pig Bag. Um, originally released in 1981, it was popular in the clubs in the Indian and the discos at the time. It was re released in 1982, became a top 10 hit. It was their only hit. Um, yeah, great, great dance tune of, that, of its time. Public image, Def Disco, on the Tim on the Metal Box album, it's known as as a Swan Lake, and it's basically it's their version of Swan Lake. Um, B side, and birds do sing, and no birds do sing. Sorry, you can see this has been coloured in by the previous owner. Another public image uh, song. This is not a love song. B side, public image, pretty good. Again, changing tact, Charlie Rich, about the much beautiful girl. B.A. Robertson, knocked it off. B.A. Robertson, real name Brian, the reason he called himself B.A. because he didn't want to get confused with Brian Robertson of Thin Lizzy. Fe again, featuring B.A. Robertson, and this with Maggie Bell, Hold Me. Top 20, 1981. This is the, the highest charts placing that Maggie Bell had. Um, great singer. She was in Stone the Crows. So, um, she was, this was on the Swan Song label. She never really got... She got the kudos of it being a great singer, but never really got the sales to match it. Another, this is, I was pleased to find this. This is Reason to Believe um, by Rod Stewart. Wasn't a great hit, however, B side was the one that was flipped. Maggie May became the big hit, the number one single across uh, in the US and the UK. From Eurovision Song Contest fans, 1975 winner, Teaching from Holland and Ding a Dong. Another flexi disc, this is Terraplane, and this is uh, I'm the One and When You're Hot to Track Live EP. Terraplane, if you should say, morphed into trouble. Pterodactyl and the Dinosaurs Seaside Shuffle, top 20 rep hit, um, written by John Lewis, not the shop. John Lewis is better known as Jonah Lewis. Number one in the States in the UK, Total Eclipse and the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. And the final single. Anita Burr, Rita Ward, Ring My Bell, number one single, 1979. Probably the best, one of the best of the disco songs that are floating around at, at the time. Ooh, look how much longer I've been speaking, and that's just the singles. So now, I best start talking, showing some albums. A bit of classical, Bach's Brandon Burke Concertos 3, 4, and 5, Strux Parts Soloist. Conducted by Marcel Gouraud, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, plays really well. I got it for pennies and it's going to get chucked out of the charity shop, so I thought I'd take it off their hands. Now, this, you don't need to, in the introduction to say this is Abbey Road by the Beatles. Now, the reason I've got this, and this is on the United now, is uh, if you live in the UK, you're probably aware of an advertisement for a series, one of these bit part series called the Beatles Vinyl Collection, which has been put out by Diagostini. And it's basically once a fortnight, you get you pick up a Beatles 180 gram uh, reissue, um, you get with it a little mag, like so, and you put store in the box, you build up a collection. Um, Cost me ten pound this album. The single album's gonna cost sixteen ninety nine, which is on par what's in the shop. But the double and triple albums, they so they're including obviously the white albums in there, but including they're gonna issue the anthology albums, number one album, love album, past masters, sixty two, sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven, seventy albums. Um 
in it. That to me were actually quite good value because they're about 30 quid in the shops. Great pocket, it plays well, it's great pressing. Now the thing that distinguishes it as the Agostini is you have it'll have a little mark there. So I got nothing against doing this because it'd be a great way of just building up the build collection. Have a, a, well not build up but have a 180 gram versions, new versions, sort of protects me older the older the Beatles records, so to speak. For a pound and it plays beautifully. Peaches main course. Released in seventy five, I believe. And you've got on here Nights on Broadway, uh Jive Talking, Fanny Contender with My Love, they were three big hit singles. Um really smart start the sound, significant change in the sound for the Bee Gees. Um Yes, he did it lend up to Black Night Fever, I think they sort of got tagged in with the disco, which was a bit unfair really. Films about disco. All they did was supply the music. Again, another album I was pleased to pick up. It plays beautifully. It's the birds, great tits. Um, yeah, good starting point. The great tits with vinyl, I think. You know, because sometimes the albums, especially at that period, you know, they were quite, they can be quite expensive. More from the um, classical. This is. This is Toscanini and the NBC Symphony playing Elgar's Edmund Cabuff variations and Brahms' Haydn variations. Plays well, pleased with that. When I brought this record, the guy at the record store says, was actually quite shocked and says, I thought you'd have, you hadn't got a copy of this. Rumours. I don't think you need to say much more about it. It was the biggest selling album at the time. Um, there were two copies there. And after I left the shop, I tweeted my niece, my, this is my, my niece wants this as well. And she said, get it, get it for me now. I said, well, I'm no longer in the shop. Well, I did say, and Pete, the owner of the store, says, every collection I seem to get will have a copy of this. So, you know, I might as well I own a copy where I can pick it up now. Record I really was pleased to find. The Kraftwerk Autobahn. He was happy to find this. It, I think it's just such an influential record, Kraftwerk influential band. The title track was a hit single in 1975 in the shortened version. Um, yeah, just what can you say? Um, just great. You know, Kraftwerk, a great band. When they put the plane burned on in June, and even though the tickets were really expensive, they just went out, went sold out like that. It's not bad for basically four, four blokes behind a synthesizer and a laptop. Album Steve Harley, Cockney Rebel, Timeless Fly to pick this up for a pound, and you know, I'm probably glad it was just a pound. Not his best album by a long chalk. Get bold. Yeah, that's okay. Not not the greatest album that he is, he ever done. <coughs> no, no hit singles, so to speak. Excuse me. <coughs> So happy to find this. This is um, or Mott Hoople's All the Young Dudes album. This is a USA original. Um, there's a couple of stuff but I didn't really notice them play as well. This is just absolute. It's on the. Let's um, prove it's an American. It's on the Columbia label, not CBS. It was in the UK. Let's put this back in. Um, yeah, just a great, just a great album. Got a version of Sweet Jane. Obviously, Bowie supplied all the young dudes. Now, as I said, we recently lost Pete over in Watts. Um, died a few, a couple of months back, and he, you've really got to thank for the Bowie link. When they'd made, Bob Hooper had made a decision they were going to split up, so. Pete over and Watts got in touch with Bowie, really looking for session work. So Bowie was so shocked that they were splitting up and they were one of his favourite bands that he um, came up and said, look, look guys, 
I don't want you to split up. Let me give you a song. And then obviously, again, the story is, it was this or Su uh, all the young dudes or Suffragette City. They didn't like Suffragette City, so they took all the young dudes. And Bowie um, and Mick Ronson, well, Bowie produced it, this album. Uh, you, so you've got Sweet Jane on it. Um, you've got, actually, Ready for Love, which Mick Ralph wrote. And it, that eventually ended up on a bad, a bad company song as Ralph's left. Um, about a year afterwards, to become to form Bad Company with Paul Rogers. Um, it's just a great, re just a great record. You know, Mark the Hoople. It, it, it are hard to come by. Yeah, to pick that up, I was really pleased. But missed a single. Walker's Revenge. Walking on, <laughs> walking on sunshine. It's an Eddie Grant song. Sorry about that. I showed the last video of Michael Schenker's uh, NSG album. This was the live album that followed up not long after. Um, this is um, One Night at the Budokan, double live album. It originally was an import, then came out afterwards. Um, not a bad live album. I think it caught the band at its peak. It's a promotional copy, um, not for sale. And you can see it's got a library, it's well marked there. In fact, this album it used to belong to BRMB Radio, which was the commercial station in Birmingham at the time. Now known as free, um, but if you ever listen to it, you probably can think of another four letter word to describe it. Amazing what you pick up in the pound bins. This is Sticks 2, the second album. Um, Figures. Um, probably best known track, Lady. Plays well, I was pleased to find that. You see another single here, Jimmy Jimmy with the Undertones, B side Mars Bar. I used to have this in the time as a young lad. Leading from the Undertones, this is all wrapped up. And you can see from the cover that Lady Gaga wasn't the first one to use the idea of wrapping themselves up with meat. Um, this came out in 1983, just after the bands split up. Um, you've basically got, it's, like, it's a two record set. Record one is the A-sides. And record two are the B-sides. Um, the undertones, you know, we all, it's well known that Teenage Kicks is John Peel's favourite song of all time. And I think when you listen to it, they, they were maturing. Unfortunately, the, ba the fans wouldn't really allow them to mature. I think they wanted songs like Teenage Kick My Perfect Cousin all the time, and it did, did, didn't, didn't really work for them. But I think this is a, a great collection. I think it's probably the best of the collections, actually. There's various. I'm really pleased to find, find this on, on vinyl. Right, this has been going on for way too long. So the final album I'm going to show you is Motown Chartbusters Volume 9. I've got all oh, Diana Russell on my life, Steve Wonders Higher Ground, um, Eddie Kendricks Keep On Trucking, I've got the big guys, um, Mr. No, all by Stevie Wonder, and Living for the City, um, Machine Gun by the Commodores. And you've even got some old ones, so you've got Baby Love by Diane Ross and Supremes. What I'm really is pleased about it's the one in green vinyl. I ain't got many coloured vinyl records. I think that now makes it four in my, in my collection. So I'm really pleased to find that. So that here ends the long video. So I hope you all stay fit and healthy. If you like what you uh, see, leave some comments. Feel free to. If um, you want to subscribe, click the subscribe button. I'll subscribe back as a matter of course. A matter of course, sorry. So enjoy the rest of your Sunday, enjoy your week, and I'll speak to you again soon, guys. Be safe.